As we've seen in the previous video, the TLS security protocol relies on certificates and cryptographic keys. In this video, we will see how to generate those using OpenSSL. The process is a bit complex, so let's take a look at it. Let's say we have two actors, the server and the certificate authority. The certificate authority, in general, will be a trusted company. Among the best known certificate authority companies, you can find Symantec, DoriSign or Sectigo. For the purpose of these videos, however, we will impersonate both the server and the CA. We should, however, always keep in mind that they are normally separate entities. The first step of the process will be to create the certificate and private key of the certificate authority. This is normally done once by the CA, which will then sign the certificates of many different servers. You can use the OpenSSL command rec to generate both the private key and the certificate file. On our hard drive, we have created a search folder, which for the moment contains two configuration files. These contain default values for the information that we will have to provide later on for the certificate authority and the server. From the command line, we execute the rec command. In the parameters, we specify the configuration file that we want to use, and that we want to generate a new private key to the RSA 2048 algorithm which should be written in the ca.key file. We also specify that we want to generate a certificate using the X509 standard with a validity period of one year and written in the ca.crt file. We have to provide a passphrase for unlocking the private key and to provide the information that will be put in the certificate. On the disk, you can see that two new files are created. The ca.key file contains the ca private key. You can open it in any text editor and see that it's a random string of bytes. The ca.crt file contains a certificate. You can open it with Windows Certificate Manager and see all the information that we previously entered. Now that we have set up the certificate authority, we can start working on the server. The first step is to use the genrsa command to create a new private key for the server. The server cannot generate the certificate itself, because it needs to be signed by the CA. Therefore, the server uses the rec command to generate a CSR, or Certificate Signing Request. In this CSR, we will put the server information just like we did with the CA. Let's go to the command line again. In the genrsa command, we specify the name of the output file and the number of bytes in the key. In the configuration file for the server, we have added a subject alternative name, which is a field that must be present in the certificate and must match the domain name of the server that will use this certificate if we want browsers such as Chrome to accept it. Since we will just run the server locally, we put localhost. To generate the CSR, we provide the key that we just generated and specify the output. As this is a CA, we will be prompted for all information that will be contained in the certificate. At this point, normally, the CSR is sent to the Certificate Authority company. The CA company uses the CSR as well as, it, as its own keys to sign the server certificate, which can then be sent back to the server company. The CA uses the X509 command with as input the CSR, the CA certificate and the CA key. We specify here validity period of one year and produce a certificate file called server.crt. We also have to give the server configuration file to make sure that the subject alternative name 
is correctly put in the certificate. Like the CA certificate, we can look at the server.crt file using Windows Certificate Manager. You can find all the information that we entered in both. So as we can see, Windows identifies problem with them. The problems come from the fact that the certificate authority is not trusted by Windows. Operating systems, browsers, and any software dealing with TLS certificates should have a list of trusted certificate authorities that they rely on to validate server certificates. Since we created the CA ourselves, we know that we can trust it, so we can install the CA certificate in the Windows list of trusted root CAs. Once we do that, if we reopen the certificate, we can see that they are now validated. In the server certi certificate, we can see the full certificate chain is the reference to the trusted CA. The final step before we use the certificate in our Tomcat server is to bundle the server certificate and the server's private key into a key store using the pkcs12 command. For the pkcs12 command, we need to specify as inputs the server certificate and private key, as well as the certificate authority. The result is the server.p12 file. The server.p12 file is the key store that will be used by Tomcat to manage uh, TLS communications. 